the table of standard reduction potentials is a useful tool to be used when evaluating redox reactions and it's important to understand exactly how this table is laid out so that it can be used more effectively. So the first thing that you'll notice is that in the NSC exams there are two tables given, a table for A and a table for B. I always encourage people to use table for B specifically as it makes it easier to determine whether or not a reaction is spontaneous. What this then means is if we look at these arrows down the left and the right hand side as we see that the arrow pointing downward states this is the increasing oxidizing ability which is often misinterpreted as the ability to be oxidized where that is not what it actually means. What it means is that it is an increasing ability to act as an oxidizing agent which is more simply put as increasing ability to be reduced basically saying that the most easily reduced element on this table is fluorine right at the bottom and then obviously the same applies on the right hand side with the increasing reducing ability which actually means increasing ability to act as a reducing agent or increasing ability to be oxidized which suggests then that lithium right at the top is the most easily oxidized. The second thing that we can see on this table is that all of these reactions are written as reversible reactions and when read from right to left, so from right to left, we see that it is an oxidation reaction. We see that lithium breaks apart into a lithium ion and an electron and when you read from left to right, it is a reduction reaction where lithium is now gaining that electron and becoming lithium proper. This table can be used to determine whether or not a reaction is spontaneous and that is done in the following way. Once you know which reaction is oxidized or which substance is being oxidized and which is being reduced, if they follow this general pattern where you have oxidation occurring and then are required to move down the table before arriving at the reduction half reaction then that will always be a spontaneous reaction. So very simply put, when oxidation occurs above reduction on table 4b, this reaction will always be a spontaneous reaction and therefore be able to yield a galvanic or a voltaic cell because those are defined by spontaneous reactions that produce an electrical current. Finally, we will see that there are cell potentials given for each of these reactions. Note that they are half cell potentials. Obviously, that requires that they are all connected to the same half cell in order to measure these. And that is why we find hydrogen in the middle of this table. Because the hydrogen, simply put, is declared as a zero cell potential. So then anything that is plugged into hydrogen, the potential that it yields, is defined as that cell potential. So we can see that the cell potential for lithium negative 3.05 and we can read our cell potentials off there. These are all cell potentials at standard conditions and obviously those can be changed. The cell potential can be changed by changing the factors that affect the rate of a reaction, that being the concentration, temperature and pressure. So once again, we prefer to use table 4b as it allows us to easily identify a spontaneous reaction because a spontaneous reaction is any reaction in which you have oxidation occurring above the reduction half reaction and then you can say that that reaction is spontaneous and we can calculate cell potential at standard conditions using these given values knowing that those cell potentials are calculated against the standard hydrogen electrode.